she's one of the, these intrepid women, you know, that have done almost everything. You can't believe how many places she'd been. I mean, there, there are very few people, men alive, that have done anything like as much as, as she has. Absolutely inspirational. Yes, our, our, life, our life's just been one long adventure, Tara. I don't think I've ever met another woman who was quite so adventurous, full of fun with it. Gung-ho, <laughs> gung-ho, <laughs> the word that fit. fit. Uh, I think that was one of the things that frightened some of the guys. Uh, Myrtle came here to uh, act as a radiographer with Donald Duff, but it also gave entry to the little sect of Lochaber climbers, uh, which was quite difficult to access because uh, women <laughs> didn't feature very much in that. Because I think I was working for Donald Duff that I was sort of accepted by this very masculine group of local guys. Well, I think I was very lucky. Perhaps because I could climb. I mean, there was a great thing at the time that, you know, girls didn't do that. They sat around and um, poor little girls, you know, the guys brought them cups of tea. They didn't suggest they led a climb. first time I met her, I, I, I had uh, gone to New Zealand and I had gone to, down to South Island because I wanted to climb in the Milford Sound area and it's, it's even wetter in Scotland down there. So I got a job at a local uh, hotel there and uh, I had an arrangement to get off as soon as the sun came out, you know. <laughs> and uh, I was working outside doing something and uh, I had this pot of a motorbike coming up the drive. And then she fell off her bike right in front of me at the bottom of the steps, you know. She lay there in the gravel with the bike revving away and uh, she looked up and she says, are you Hamish McKinney? <laughs> <laughs> so that was my first meeting with Myrtle. And of course, there were very few people climbing in New Zealand at the time. Hillary, I think, was about the only guy that did. So you could Virgin Peaks at the weekend, and it was just, just an absolute magic place to be. She was actually an, an amazing uh, ambassador for things that you know women could do. She was uh, extraordinary, really, in in what she did in the, uh, particularly in the in the, at the time. You know, there weren't a lot of girls getting stuck in in quite the same way. I wanted to climb up climb higher mountains and it was difficult to get into the Himalayas at, at that time unless you were part of an alpine club or something like that but there were absolutely nothing to stop you going to Peru. Just had a magic time and climbed all sorts of things including the highest mountain in Peru which is called the Huascaran which was you know, thrilling for us. And we came back and I married Hugh and he was in the, he was writing up his work in the Antarctic but he wanted to do more research into the Arctic to that. Anyway, anyway, then I found I was pregnant. What was I going to do? I was far too selfish to stay at home. So me and the baby went went as well, and we went to Spitsbergen, and Svalbard, off the nor you know, north of Norway, and we were there for six months. And I just fell in love with the high Arctic, and that's where I've tried to spend all my... a lot of time ever since. The baby by that time was... was... Um, getting quite big and I one of our friends Wally Herbert who's a name most people know Wally was in charge of the baby while I went off to climb and when I came back the baby could crawl and Wally said I was just fed up carting him around and so I just put him down on the ground <laughs> so anyway Robin has grown up to be a colonel in the British Army as a doctor so I don't think anything like that held him back she's been absolutely involved in the setting up of the Glencoe ski area and in the uh, setting up of Cairngorm and certainly with Nevis Range uh, for on on my side so you know she's been involved in in three of the major you know there are only five ski areas in Scotland and Myrtle has been highly involved in getting the three of those. I still ski 
I can ski anywhere because I learned. I really put, got myself to ski in Glencoe, where, the, where everything is frightful. And if you can ski in Glencoe, down this sheet ice, down the you know everything that goes wrong with skiing, you can you can ski anywhere. I think skiing is an excellent sport for the elderly um, because the lifts will take you up and all you have to do is go downhill. And I'm amazed how many old people, actually, who are perfectly far better skiers than me, don't pursue it. They're frightened of falling over. And I keep, you know, saying to them, that's ridiculous. This is the sport for us oldies. For instance, I compete in the Scottish Masters circuit and I get a gold medal if I go down the course because there are no other women of my age that compete. And that's ridiculous. There are masses of women that are infinitely better skiers than me, but they've given up. So you tell your granny to get her skis out. Wherever you live in Scotland, the hills are pretty close if you really want to reach them. And that's a tremendous asset for us. And luckily, more and more people realise that. There's something I think that man, mankind needs to touch their soul, and you can get it in the wild, in the wilderness places. You, we need these. We need the, that lung. We're desperate. Everybody needs a chance to gasp the fresh air, and as a country, we need it desperately. A more deserving person there is there isn't uh, at all. She's uh, she's got all ticks all the boxes. She's got uh, loads of gumption, still going strong. So no, I I can't imagine anybody else more deserving. This is a great representative of uh, what all this is about, uh, and she's been doing it for years, and uh, a great admiration for her. You know, she really is. Uh, Quite a tough cookie. <laughs> I don't know what's the right thing to say, but uh, yeah.